number 8, Wesley Street. On September the 18th of 2019, 20-year-old Keely Bunker, along with a close female friend and her childhood friend, 20-year-old Wesley Street, were partying at a nightclub in Birmingham, England. When the night ended, Bunker's friend asked her if she wanted to sleep over at her house, but she declined, reassuring her that Street would walk her home safely, as they lived close to each other. However, in the days that followed, Bunker's family reported that she never got home and that they tried reaching her on her phone, but she wasn't answering. On September the 24th, the authorities, along with Bunker's family and friends, launched a search for her. Within a few hours, her uncle Jason Brown found her dead body lying face down in a woodland pool of water in Wigginton Park, Tamworth. Street was the last person to have seen Bunker alive, so he was called in for questioning. He had told her friends and family that he had walked the young woman up to a telephone box near her home and maintained she was alive when they separated. However, after checking CCTV, police found his story to have been a fabrication. After being confronted with the evidence, Street alleged that he and Bunker had started flirting with each other during their walk and that they'd engaged in intercourse in Wigginton Park. He then admitted to having strangled her during the act, accidentally killing her. During the investigations, Street changed his story several times. The police ultimately concluded that he'd abused and murdered Keeley Bunker before trying to hide her body with vegetation. He was sentenced to life in prison in August 2020 after also being found guilty of a series of other assaults dating back to 2015. Number 7. Sidney Cole 19-year-old Sidney Cole was arrested in Magaluf, Spain on April the 15th of 2019 after attacking her friend, 23-year-old Sarah Ann Garrity, with a glass. The two British female soldiers had been vacationing in Palma de Mallorca and they were sharing a hotel room with another colleague, Deborah Ferguson. The three of them were at a nightclub and had been on a 14-hour drinking binge when an argument broke out between Cole and Ferguson. Trying to appease the conflict, Garrity intervened between them and that is when Cole slashed her throat with a glass. Garrity lost four pints of blood that night but survived thanks to a rugby player who was at the scene. He helped contain the bleeding until the paramedics arrived and took her to the nearest hospital. Garrity also suffered a collapsed lung after the attack and she spent 24 hours in intensive care. Despite her ordeal, she refused to press charges against Cole at the time as she felt sorry for her, so the attacker was quickly released. However, a year later, Sidney Cole was called to face a Spanish court after the British Army refused to suspend her activity and allowed her to continue serving alongside her victim. The trial is ongoing and Cole could be convicted of attempted homicide which comes with a maximum penalty of 15 years in jail. Number 6. Sam Donnelly On the night of July the 27th of 2015, 20-year-old Sam Donnelly, along with his friend and fellow band member Liam Miller, also aged 20, were experimenting with a hallucinogenic drug, commonly known as Mr. Happy, at the former's family home in New York. They were outside on the street by the gate of the house when Donnelly began violently stabbing Miller with a kitchen knife, killing him. He struck his friend 32 times before 60-year-old Theophilus Theophilo, who was passing by, tried to intervene and stop the attack but was also injured. Eventually, Theophilo and a neighbor managed to separate Donnelly from his victim and keep him inside the house until the police arrived. In their efforts to arrest him, officers had to use a taser on Donnelly for his own safety as he was screaming while running up and down the stairs and trying to stab himself in the throat. The 20-year-old later said he was hallucinating the whole time and believed he was stabbing a skull to get out of a dream world. He deeply regretted killing Miller, his best friend, whom he adored. He was initially charged with murder but the prosecution changed the charge to manslaughter after psychiatrists and toxicologists attested to the dangerous effects of the drug. Number 5. Shay Harkins On June the 16th of 2020, 26-year-old Shay Harkins and his friend Sean Cook, also aged 26, were playing video games together at the former's home in Palm Harbor, Florida. Harkins showed Cook a Colt M4 rifle that he'd been customizing and pointed it at him jokingly. Right away, Cook casually asked his friend if he was going to shoot him and instead of replying, Harkins pulled the trigger. A bullet fatally struck Cook in the chest, much to Harkins' shock. 
as he'd thought the rifle was unloaded. He immediately called for help and first responders transported Cook to the hospital, but efforts to revive him proved fruitless. He was pronounced dead about an hour after the incident. Three days later, on June the 19th, Harkins was arrested and admitted to pulling the trigger on his friend. He was released from jail after posting a bail of $10,000. Number 4. Jesse Kaczewski On October the 3rd of 2018, 37-year-old Jesse Kaczewski called 911 to report her friend was unconscious and not breathing at her home in Wisconsin. The authorities didn't release the second woman's name. At the scene, police found her lying on a recliner with crushed medication on her chest and on a plate nearby. As investigators suspected an overdose, Kaczewski told them her friend had been having thoughts of self-harm because she was ill and sick of being sick. Kaczewski also stated that she'd been acting unusual since her last hospital visit. The friend had allegedly told her where important documents were located in the house and that she didn't want her cats to be put in a nursing home. Police didn't take into account the possibility of murder until weeks later when the toxicology results came in. The autopsy revealed a fatal amount of tetrahydrozoline, an active ingredient in eye drops in the deceased woman's blood. After determining such a high quantity couldn't have been taken in solely through her eyes, police began investigating her death as a homicide. During the interviews, her relatives and friends told the police that they doubted she had been planning to take her own life. Additionally, her family expressed concerns as to why the woman would have instructed Kaczewski about all her possessions and not her closest relatives. In July of 2019, Kaczewski was arrested as a murder suspect. When confronted with the autopsy results, she claimed that her friend was always buying eye drops in bulk and drinking them with vodka. At first, she denied having any involvement in the woman's death. However, she later changed her story and stated that a friend had asked her for a water bottle in which she'd previously mixed six bottles of eye drop solution. Kaczewski thus admitted assisting her in committing suicide but denied killing her and subsequently staging the scene. During the investigation, the authorities also discovered Kaczewski had transferred more than $290,000 of her friend's money into her account and that she was in control of her estate. According to the most recent updates on the case, she was charged with first-degree intentional homicide and two counts of theft, with bail set at $1 million. Number 3. Alexander Thompson in the evening of August the 26th of 2016, 33-year-old Alexander Thompson and his friend Thomas Hume, aged 23, were sharing a taxi on the streets of London, England. Thompson had been celebrated and drinking with work colleagues, and at some point during the night, Hume joined him. They eventually got an Uber together to go to a house party in Clapham. As the car sat at traffic lights, Hume noticed Thompson had put his feet up between the seats and removed one of his shoes throwing it out the window as a prank. In response, Thompson punched his friend once in the head. The strike didn't leave a bruise, but it twisted Hume's head around. When the car stopped, he stepped out and appeared to be fine at first. But soon after, he collapsed on the ground. He was taken to the hospital where he died the next day after suffering a brain hemorrhage. Thompson pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to three years in jail. Number two, Bob Tang. In May of 2017, 51-year-old California man Bob Tang was told by his wife that she wanted a divorce. Tang, however, had been suspecting her of having an affair with his best friend, San Francisco Uber driver Piseth Chahe. On May the 14th, Chahe left his home telling his wife, Ratana Kim, that he was going to meet Tang. The conversation marked the last time that Kim and their two children saw him alive. Chahe's family declared him missing and months later, Police were called to a warehouse in Hayward, California, where a dog unit had discovered body parts stuffed in garbage bags. The DNA samples matched Chahay's, making Tang the main suspect, as he had been working at the warehouse for over 20 years. He was called to a police interview on May the 24th, which he agreed to attend, but he never did. His car was later found parked at San Francisco International Airport. It's believed that he fled to Cambodia as the US does not have any extradition treaty with that country. It would thus be possible for him to evade being brought to justice even if found. The FBI offered a reward of $10,000 for information leading to his arrest. Because of the gruesome nature of the murder, the media compared Tang to fictional serial killer Dexter. Number 1. Rosalba Grimm 
On August 27th of 2020, 24-year-old Flavia Godinho Mafra left her home in Canalinha, southern Brazil, to attend what she'd been led to believe would be her baby shower. She was 36 weeks pregnant, and her old school friend, Rosalba Grimm, had offered to throw her a party. On the day of the event, Grimm and her husband, Zulmer Schiestel, offered to give Godinia Mafra a lift and drove her to an abandoned pottery yard where none of the guests she'd been expecting were present. Grimm then took a brick and hit Godinia Mafra in the head, knocking her unconscious. She then proceeded to cut up her abdomen with a blade in order to take the unborn child out. After extracting the baby, Grimm and Schiestel abandoned the woman's body and took the child to a local hospital, claiming it was their own and that Grimm had just given birth. However, medical staff found the woman had none of the physical signs typical of her condition and discovered the baby had cuts on her back, so they alerted the police. Grimm and Schiestel were arrested at the scene. During interrogation, Grimm admitted to having had a miscarriage months before the incident. She had become obsessed with stealing a child and, to the rest of the world, pretended to still be pregnant. Grimm told the police she had been plotting for five or six weeks prior to kill her friend and take her baby. Grimm also admitted to hitting Godinia Mafra in the head with a brick and leaving her body in the abandoned pottery yard. The following morning, the victim's husband found her lifeless body and confirmed the murder. Rosalba Grimm faced trial for homicide while Schiestel was acquitted of the crime as investigators discovered he had been deceived and manipulated. Thanks for watching. If you could have any famous person, alive or dead, become your best friend, who would you choose and why? Let us know in the comments section below.